all good in one sense if there's only one curriculum. No matter what the method of education, there's only what is the basic and universal, the human experience and practice, the underlying structure of culture. Paul Goodman explains that every curriculum's content is influenced by culture. This is, which is a crucial consideration while developing curriculum. This is true because the purpose of education is to pass on a society's cultural history to its younger member. Curriculum is a viable tool for reaching the educational goal of a nation. Therefore, in a limited sense, education is nothing more than a purposeful action that is consciously organized for the best development of a person's potential. Some of the students had confusion on remembering or recalling the lesson or the topic that they had learned in their previous grade level. If managed properly, confusion can enhance learning by encouraging people to think about the subject matter more carefully in order to clear up their misunderstanding. We overestimate what we actually recall which contributes to our perception that we forget the majority of what we studied in school. Sometimes, though, we are aware that we recall something but fail to realize that we studied it in school. If remembering the source of knowledge is difficult, you can see how it will be easy to conclude you don't remember much from school. The basic education curriculum has an impact on what and how students learn as well as how they behave and how they perceive the world, more particularly to offer students learning opportunities for the development of moral principles and foundational knowledge that will enable them to become informed, critical, creative, and productive members of society. The curriculum remains unchanged for years. It lacks the innovation and adaptation to the changes of the present society. It also provides that the curriculum review and revises to enhance students' learning, uh, engagement, experience, and outcomes. The present high school curriculum is thought to be more scientific in terms of both content and form, focusing on the students' enthusiasm in learning thanks to the creation and enhancement of the curriculum. The basic education curriculum is a form of tool which will stand as one point of learning areas as adequate for the development of competencies. It aims to teach skills and knowledge that are important in life and to secure a foundation of equal education for everyone. But it should not be reused because there are factors that influence students' learning. And these factors are financial, mental, and motivational. First, financial. Many students struggle to reach the same academic achievement levels of students not living in poverty. In fact, one of the most measures of academic achievement in today's school is poverty. It is crucial that teachers are aware of how poverty affects students' behavior and ability to learn in the classroom as the number of pupils raised in poverty rises. Poverty affects how the brain develops and can lead to behavioral issues in the classroom. Due to the absence of resources for student success, this consequently negatively impacts academic attainment. Lack of resources is intimately associated with low achievement and various research have shown that low socioeconomic position and low achievement are related. Second, mental. Students might develop a increased amount of depression and anxiety because it might run the risk of struggling academically and become resistant to anything educational. Because anxiety and depression can impair working memory, which is difficult to retain new knowledge and recall materials that already been taught, uh, the learning is, is so hampered that depression and anxiety hinders academic growth and promotes under achievement. On IQ and achievement exams, students with high levels of anxiety do worse than their peers. Third, motivation. It has a direct impact on how individual learns. 
The effect of motivation typically have broad repercussions because it boosts one's energy level. Decides one's perseverance in achieving a certain goal, impacts the kinds of learning approaches used, and alters one's thought processes because they frequently consider underlying factors or conceptual frameworks. Motivated students are better equipped to apply newly learned material to novel circumstances. A student has less mental and emotional energy to concentrate on their social image while they are really engaged in a task. Additionally, motivation results in more work and energy. It decides whether a learner will approach a task with a positive attitude or a negative one. The beginning and continuation of activities are enhanced by motivation. So, in conclusion, the curriculum should not be reviewed and revised because it shows that these factors affect the students and the people. It cannot. It also cannot be remain motionless because the curriculum must be a living document in a constant flux. It must be flexible enough to change the educational landscape and the society at large too. Why we have, now we have told you the reasons why it should not be reviewed and revised by discussing its knowledge, making you understand it, and showing its effects on other people. Because no curriculum will ever be flawless. The development of the curriculum should be understood as a process, process by fulfilling, by which fulfilling students' needs and leads to enhancement of a student's learning. The reason that we're telling you all of this is that we want all of you to understand the situation that we're suffering right now so that one of you will able to provide a solution to end this problem and hope that it will never happen again in the near future. So to end this video, a quote from Ellen Nordegren that education is one thing no one can take away from you. Thank you.